Hi, my name is Jim. The next topic in AC circuits are a trig review and uh, the introduction of phasers. And uh, this is must know stuff. You're going to be using it forever in this class and other classes. <clears throat> so it's important that you understand this. So we're going to start with the sine uh, function. And what we have here is the side opposite, the side adjacent, and the hypotenuse. And in the sine function, the sine is of an angle is equal to the ratio of the side opposite to the hypotenuse, which would be equal to 6 divided by 10, which is 0 0.6. Not too much, too much to that. Now, if we want to find the angle, that's called an inverse operation. And <clears throat> what the inverse means, and you can see that by sine, uh, raised to the negative one power. That's the indication that you're looking for the inverse. It means I want the angle, plain and simple. Any inverse operation is your looking for the angle. So in this case, uh, the angle would be equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.6, which comes out to be 36.87 degrees. And that would be the angle right in there <coughs> between the side adjacent and the hypotenuse. Uh, these two equations are it for right angle trig review. Got to know them. Now let's look at our second guy, cosine function. Cosine is side adjacent to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. And in this example, that's going to be 8 divided by 10, which equals 0 0.8. And if we want to find the angle on that, again, we're going to have to use the inverse cosine function which is cosine uh, negative 1 is 0 0.8 and that comes out surprisingly to be 36.87 degrees and that would be the angle between the hypotenuse and the sine adjacent. It's exactly the same as the sine um, inverse as it should be. So these two equations are it for review of the cosine function that we're going to be needing in this course. Lastly is the tangent function. The tangent function is side opposite divided by side adjacent. So the ratio of that would be 0 0.75. Now if we want the angle, again we take the inverse tangent of 0 0.75 and that gives us 36.87 degrees just as before. Now the thing you got to note is that the inverse tangent is not defined for 90 degrees. In that case, say the side opposite was 6, and if we shrink the side adjacent down to 0, we end up with 6 divided by 0, which is undefined. So we have to be careful of that, but realistically, if the side opposite is laying exactly on the uh, what will turn out to be the plus j axis, we know what it is anyway, so it's not, not any big problem. <clears throat> now, phasers are the electrical term for vectors. And what they have is distance and direction. So uh, in a phaser here, what our axes look like is a real axis, a negative real axis, a plus j imaginary, and a negative j imaginary. Now, imaginary sounds pretty scary, but as it turns out, it isn't. In electronics, we use plus j. In mathematics, they use i. Now, the reason that we use plus j is because we use i for current, but it means exactly the same thing. So, uh, in sometimes, uh, a voltage will have a real part and an imaginary part, and uh, in this case, we're dealing with an offset from some reference point and the voltage here as defined would be and this is in rectangular form V equals 8 plus J6 8 on the real axis plus J6 here on the imaginary axis now we can't add these together because they're unlike terms so uh, what is the magnitude and angle so this is a rectangular form of this and if we added two sine waves, one 8 volts and one 6 volts, shifted by plus 90 degrees, is what would we end up with? 
So um, if we go to find that out, what we have to do is convert rectangular form, which is this guy, into polar form. Now the way we do that is pretty straightforward. V equals V real squared plus V imaginary squared, and that will give us the magnitude of the hypotenuse. And the angle is going to be the inverse tangent of the imaginary voltage, 6, divided by the real voltage, which is 8. And that will give us an angle here of um, 36.87 degrees. So if we were to represent this in polar form, it would be 10 volts at 36.87 degrees. In blue, 10 volts, the angle is 36.87 degrees. And in rectangular form, it's 8 plus J6. They both mean the same thing. So the reason that we want to be comfortable with rectangular and polar forms is we're going to be adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. And uh, the rectangular form is very easy for adding and subtracting. And the polar form is very easy for multiplying and dividing. So we want to be able to move back and forth between the two of them very quickly and very easily. And this is the way we do it. Note that this is exactly the same as this from the standpoint of the circuit. They're just two different ways of representing it. So we got this J guy, and that's a question mark. Um, what does it mean? Um, so uh, I like the geometrical meaning of J, which is like uh, I in mathematics, uh, as opposed to other meanings, and there's whole books written on the square root of negative 1, and that's what J represents. But in the geometrical sense, all it means is we're going to rotate a phasor by 90 degrees. So, for example, if we had a real value of 3, and that could be 3 volts, 3 amperes, 3 ohms, and we multiply it by J, J3 is all we're going to do is shift that 90 degrees. And if we take J3 and multiply it by J again, we get JJ3, which is the same as J squared 3, and what we see is we're on a negative real axis. So J squared basically is the same as negative 1 times our value of 3, which gives us negative 3. If we wanted to rotate it again by 90 degrees, we'd end up with JJJ3, which is J times J squared 3. So taking 3, if we multiplied it by negative J3, we would take this 3 and move it down here to negative J3. So in a geometrical sense, it's kind of easy to see that it's just rotation by 90 degrees. So J squared equals negative 1. Um, in mathematics, that would be I squared equals negative 1. <coughs> So, for some, some examples here, suppose we have a current expressed as 8 um, amperes at negative 30 degrees, and this is expressed in polar form because we have a magnitude and an angle, and we want to convert it to rectangular form. So, we're going to take the real part of this, the real is 8 times the cosine. The cosine will always give you the real component of negative 30 degrees, and that gives us 6.98 volts real. And here we see that on the real axis. Uh, continuing, we want the imaginary part of this is 8 sine of negative 30 degrees, and that comes out to be negative J 4 volts. So negative J is going to be down here at 4 volts. And put a couple dots in here. So uh, what we've done now is we've converted polar into rectangular by using the cosine and sine operators. And this is the voltage of the hypotenuse. And this is the angle of interest. Okay, uh, again, cosine gives the real part, sine gives the imaginary part. And we could say that if we had a 6.93 at zero degree voltage um, is added to a four volt lagging 90 degree voltage is what the math would look like on that is 6.93 plus J0. 
So that's going to be on the real axis. And there's no imaginary part to this because it's on the J axis, 90 degrees. So the real part's going to be 0 minus J4. And adding them together gives a real component of 6.93 minus J4. And if we do the math on that, we find out we end up with, guess what? 8 at negative 30 degrees. How do we do that? We would convert the rectangular form given here into the polar form. And we should be able to switch back and forth and then end up with exactly the same values. So those are the two ways of representing this. And this comes about by the genius of a man named Steinmetz back, I think it was in the late 1800s, figured this out. And what this is, believe it or not, is a simple but powerful way that avoids calculus in doing these calculations. And the nice part is, is we can apply this technique to any periodic waveform that we can decompose into a series of sine waves. We do the math on each sine wave, and by the principle of superposition, add them back together. So it's a really powerful but simple, believe it or not, technique. So rectangular form is good for adding and subtracting. It's very easy to do that. So uh, polar form is good for multiplying and dividing. It's very easy to do that. So a rectangular to polar conversion is simply the square root of the real value squared plus the imaginary value squared and the angle is going to be the inverse tangent of the imaginary, that's going to be the guy on the j-axis, divided by the real. Uh, likewise, if we want to convert from polar to rectangular, the real component is going to be the voltage of interest, which would be the hypotenuse, times the cosine operator of the angle, and that will give us the real voltage sitting on the real axes. That would be this guy here, and to find the imaginary component, it's the voltage of interest times the sine operator times the angle, and that will give us um, a voltage um, either here minus J or plus J, depending upon the <coughs> sine of the angle. So let's work through a couple examples where we're going to add two voltages, and these could just as well be currents, doesn't matter. Um, or um, impedances, uh, that is to say resistors and capacitive or inductive reactants, which we haven't talked about yet, but let's just say it's voltage right now. So we have one voltage, which is uh, 2 volts real at plus J8, so it's going to have quite a steep angle in it, something like this perhaps. And we want to add to it 1 real plus J2. Well, we add the like terms together, which gives us 3. And we have these like terms together, which gives us J10. So if we wanted to, we could convert this into polar form and figure out what the angle is by taking the inverse tangent of 10 over 3. Second example, we have 2 at plus J8 again, and we're going to add to that negative 4 real uh, minus uh, J2. So uh, when we add this, is what we get is a positive 2 plus a negative 4 is going to be negative 2 real. And a positive J8 plus a negative J2 is going to give us a positive J6. So you can see that the rules of sign numbers are uh, applicable here. We just have to be careful of not confusing the real and the imaginary terms. Now in subtracting, suppose we have 2 plus J8 and we want to subtract from it a real of plus 1 plus J2. Well, what this basically means is we're going to be multiplying this by a negative 1 and now we're going to distribute that across the subtrahend. So this is the same as 2 plus J8 plus a negative 1 plus a negative J.2. And this here will give us a real of plus 1, and this will give us an imaginary of plus J6. So uh, the rules of subtraction are uh, in reverse the sign of the subtrahend and add. We just have to be careful that we do that to both the real and the imaginary terms. Taking another example, we have 2 plus J8, and we're subtracting from it a negative 4 real. 
uh, minus j dot 2, so we're going to uh, change the sign of the subtrahend. Negative 4 becomes plus 4, and negative j2 becomes plus j2. Adding the real terms gives us 6. Adding the imaginary terms gives us plus j10. It's not very clear. j10. So adding and subtracting in rectangular form, as you can see, and especially with subtracting, you have to be real careful that you parenthesize things and make sure that you alter the sign of, um, of both the components in the subterrain. Now, if we multiply two voltages in polar form, what we do is we multiply the magnitude, so we have 5 times 6 is going to give us 30, easy enough, and we add the angles. So we have 30 plus a negative 45, and that gives us a negative 15 degrees. Taking another example, we have 5 at negative 30 times 8 at negative 80. So 5 times 8 is 40, and negative 30 plus a negative 80 gives us a negative 110 degrees. So in polar form, multiplication is very simple. Dividing two voltages in polar form is we divide the magnitudes and we subtract the angle in the subtrahend, that's the bottom guy, uh, from the minuend, which is the top guy. So, for example, if we have 45 at 30 degrees and we want to divide that by 5 at negative 45 degrees, is uh, 5 goes into 45 9 times, and then I've kind of spread this out a little bit. We have 30 degrees minus the denominator, which is negative 45 degrees. So we're subtracting a negative. Uh, basically means we add them together, and our answer becomes 9 at uh, negative 75 degrees. Uh, example number 2, we have 5 at negative 30 degrees divided by 15 at negative 70 degrees. So we're going to divide the magnitudes. 5 divided by 15 is going to give us 0 0.3 repeating. And uh, we have negative 30 degrees minus a negative 70 degrees. So this is going to be negative 30 degrees plus 70 degrees, which gives us a positive 40 degrees. So that would be the solution to that problem. So be careful with your signs on this. Uh, multiplying and dividing using polar or straightforward, that's what you have to remember is right on this page. And adding and subtracting in rectangular is straightforward too, just keeping track of uh, like terms. Now I want to give you an application here so this kind of makes sense. And um, what we need to do is introduce the term impedance in the symbol of Z. And this is the opposition to current flow in an AC circuit. So it's kind of like R in a DC circuit, except it can include resistors, inductors, and capacitors. So as a very precursory introduction to a capacitor, it's two conductors separated by an insulator. And uh, when I was a kid, I tried to make a Tesla coil, and I took window glass and put aluminum foil on both sides of it, and then ran it from a, a neon sign transformer made big sparks and it's like I didn't electrocute myself, but anyhow. Two conductors separated by an, in, an insulator. Now the formula, and this is for sine waves, for the opposition of current flow from a capacitor is called uh, reactance capacitor. So this is the capacitive reactance, which is the opposition to current flow um, with a voltage impressed across the capacitor. And that is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi of C. And F is going to be the frequency of interest, and C is going to be the value of the capacitor, say in microfarads or nanofarads, and we'll go into this later in, in some more detail. But suppose at some frequency, the capacitive reactance equals 12 ohms. So I represent that in a circuit as negative J12. Now, the word capacitive reactance means negative J. It's embedded in the word capacitive reactance. And I'm going to put this in series with a resistor, 10 ohms, and the voltage across this I'm going to represent as being 5 volts at 0 degrees, 
so there's no offset. Now the reason this makes sense is suppose you're receiving a radio signal. Well the angle of the carrier signal, it's what carries the information, arriving at your radio has a very different phase of that of the transmitter. But so what? The radio is local to you. You don't care what it is coming off the transmitter. So in reference to that here, zero degrees is kind of a good place to start. So uh, what we want to do here is uh, we want to find V out, which is going to be the voltage across the capacitor to ground, and find the impedance, which is a total opposition of um, to current flow uh, through the circuit. Now since these are unlike terms, we can't add them together directly. So what we have to do is take the real part, which is 10 ohms, and the imaginary part, which is minus J 12 ohms, and combine them. And the way we're going to do that is, guess what? Rectangular to polar form. The impedance is going to be equal to the square root of the real squared plus the imaginary squared minus J. And the angle is going to be the inverse tangent of the capacitive reactance divided by the resistance. And since this is negative J, we actually need a negative sign right there to make sure the angle comes out correctly. So going further, the impedance is going to be equal to 10 squared plus 12 squared inverse tangent of negative 12 over 10 gives us the square root of 244. And uh, the inverse tangent of a negative 1.2, and working that through, and it would be good if you followed along with your calculators on this, is that would give us 15.6 at a negative 50.2 degrees ohms. Okay, so that would be the opposition to current flow through the circuit. And what you see here is we have an angle. So, I guess the voltage across the capacitor is not going to be at zero degrees. Now we're going to go into this in detail, so don't be kind of freaked out by what we have on the page here. But the application is important. I always hated learning stuff. I didn't know what good it would do me. So this is this is kind of the reason that we're dealing with phasers and uh, imaginary values and real values. So V out, I'm going to use a voltage divider here would be equal to the impedance of the capacitor minus J12 and that happens to be um, also uh, we could say is that this would be 12 at negative 90 degrees ohms. So I can express negative J12 in rectangular form as the polar equivalent of 12 at negative 90 degrees in polar form. And that's going to make our math easier to do that. So, uh, doing voltage divider, we take the guy we want the voltage across divided by the total impedance that we just figured out here is 15.6 of negative 50.2 degrees ohms. Um, <clears throat> so we'll be multiplying 5 volts times in the numerator. This guy, the voltage across the capacitor relative to ground, expressed as a polar value to make the math easy as 12 and negative 90 degrees. Here's our negative 90 degrees. Um, and uh, divided by the total impedance which we just calculated is 15.6 at negative 50.2 degrees ohms. So what we have here is volts and the ohms unit cancel out so we're going to end up with a unit in volts and multiplying 5 times 12 and dividing that by 15.6 gives us 3.85. So that's going to be the magnitude. And then I've kind of broken out the angles here to make it a little bit more clear. We're multiplying, so we're going to add 0 to 90 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, 0 to negative 90 degrees. And then we're going to subtract the angle in the denominator from the result of this. So basically this is going to be equal to 3.5 and the angle is going to be negative 90 subtracting a negative 50.2 means we're adding 
50.2 and this is going to give us 3.85 volts at negative 39.8 degrees. So that will be the voltage V out across the capacitor. Now, let's take a look and see what this looks like. Okay, the V out is 3.85 and negative 39.8. And if we want to graph this, it's best to do that in polar form. I'm sorry, in rectangular form. So let's convert it into rectangular form because we know how to do that. It's 3.85 times the cosine of negative 39.8. So the real component is 2.96 volts. So I'm going to put my phaser there at 2.96 volts. And the imaginary part is going to be 3.85 sine of negative 39.8 degrees. And that comes out to be negative J, 2.46 volts. So if I connect the dots here, is what I would have would be the original um, phaser we started with, hopefully correct. 3.85 would be the magnitude, and the angle in here would be negative 39.8 degrees, and this is not the scale, so it's off a little bit. So let's check this out and make sure that it didn't make a mistake somewhere. So what we'll do is we'll convert, convert it back into polar, and see if we get the same uh, result that we started with. So V out is going to be equal to the real squared plus the imaginary squared, square root of, and the angle is going to be the inverse tangent of negative 2.46, that guy, divided by the real, uh, 2.96, that guy, and doing the math on this, we end up with 3.85 at negative 39.8. 73 degrees volts. So uh, we end up back where we started. So uh, if we wanted to graph this, it's always the right way to convert it into real and imaginary instead of trying to guess what the magnitude is and realistically you'd have to use a protractor to get the angle in here. Whereas if you do it like this, especially on graph paper, it's just dots a uh, new phaser and then uh, right in the angle. So uh, there's an awful lot there that we just discussed having to do with the phasers and with trig and um, uh, study this and phasers are covered heavily in, in homework too um, and trig is going to be everywhere so be sure you understand these concepts because these are absolute core to the course. Now the next stop on this is going to be series circuits and you saw an example in the application before but before I get into that I need to explain what uh, capacitors and inductors are and the way they behave. So that'll do it for this topic and um, study it, use your book, your study groups, make sure you walk out of a study group knowing what you're supposed to know. Just don't write down homework problems because on a test it's the end of the world. Be up to date on this. Do not fall behind. This is not easy material and it gets more involved. So thank you for watching.